All right, welcome to our uh, college algebra final exam review. Yay! Uh, so we're going to go through a series of topics that uh, we've encountered the entire semester. These are all things that we uh, I would expect you to have a uh, basic knowledge of and could basically handle on your own. So uh, these are just meant to be a brief review. Um, obviously, anything here that you don't know how to answer, I would go back and look it up. Um, once you see me work it out, it sort of takes away the magic and you kind of know the answer to that one question, but you do want to kind of spend a few minutes researching um, how to work out, uh, especially anything that you're qu not quite sure at the, from looking at it what it is. So number one, uh, we are asked to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, so in this case, it's always a good idea to start with factoring. Uh, let's see, z and z, uh, 15. All right, so that'd be five and three. And let's see, let's play with our signs here. Uh, I need the 5 to be the big one and the 3 to be the minus. Okay, so, and if I FOIL that, uh, I should get a positive 2z in the middle. And so set each one of my little binomials equal to 0. And so I get that z is 3 and negative 5. Yay! All right, uh, the next question, uh, I got a square root on it. So what I want to do is I want to square both sides. Now I'm just going to caution you, uh, anytime we square something, uh, if you square a negative, you get a positive. So sometimes in math, uh, we treat things like they're positive numbers, even though, if, even though they initially aren't. So the, the moral here is check your answer when you're done. Uh, and if it's not really a solution, then you want to ignore it. Uh, okay, so when I square both sides, I get 24 minus 5x equals x squared. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring everything over with the x squared. So 0 is x squared uh, plus 5x minus 24. And then we're going to try factoring again. So x and x. Uh, let's see, 24, uh, 12 and 2, 8 and 3. Oh, 8 and 3. I like 8 and 3. Okay. And I want the 8 to be the positive and the 3 to be the negative. So x minus 3 equals 0 and x plus 8 equals 0. So x is 3 and negative 8. And again, uh, before I get too excited here, I do want to check and make sure that both of those are actually valid answers. So I'm going to evaluate this at 3 first. So 24 minus 15, I get 9, and yeah, we're good. Okay, so 3 is a good number. Uh, and let's check uh, the negative 8, which already I'm going to cry foul with. But let me show, see if I can show you why. Okay, so if you look at it, even before I do any math, um, I'm saying on the left side I got the square root of something and on the right side, it equals negative 8. Well, there's no way a square root will ever simplify down to a negative. Uh, even if I do carry out the math on the inside, uh, I get the square root of 64, uh, which is positive 8. So those, those clearly are not the same. Okay, so negative 8 is not a valid solution, but 3 is. All right, we're going to solve each inequality. Uh, the trick here is to remember interval notation and then sketch a graph. Uh, okay, so in this first one, I'm going to distribute the 3 in. So 3 times 2 is 6x plus 3 minus 4 less than or greater than or equal to 11. So I don't distribute the 3 to the 4 because it's just where the 3 is being multiplied. Uh, I do see some like terms that I can combine. And I do see that I can add 1. So 6x greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 6. So I get x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so on a number line, uh, we've got 2 that's shaded. And we're going everything to the right of it. So in an interval notation, it would be 2 out to infinity. And so those are the three forms of our answer. 
the second question is what's called a three-part inequality. Uh, so normally in math, what we do to the left, we have to do to the right. This time we're saying whatever we do to one side, we have to do to all three sides. Uh, so I see that I can subtract 6 off. Uh, so that gives me negative 10 is less than or equal to negative 2x, which is less than or equal to 15. Uh, and then I can divide everything by negative 2. Now when I do that, my inequality switch, and it's going to look kind of weird for a second. So I get a positive 5 greater than or equal to x greater than or equal to negative 15 halves. Well, that's not normally how we see it. Normally we see it with the less thans, uh, so we need to kind of rewrite this for our answer. Uh, so negative 15 halves is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. Oddly, that means the same as the other, saying it the other way. Saying that 5 is bigger than negative 15 halves is the same as saying as negative 15 halves is less than 5. Uh, as far as a graph goes, I've got uh, negative 15 halves and 5, which are both closed circles. And I want to shade everything in between. And then in interval notation, I'm going to put brackets down on everything. Okay, uh, and number three, and actually just not number three, but I want to encourage you to go back through your notes and look at all the different application problem types that we've seen. Uh, chances are, if I put it on the review, it's not guaranteed to show up on the final, but I'm trying to get you to remember to look up uh, the different types of applications. So with the motorboat problem, uh, we had we made a little chart where we did upstream, downstream, and we spelled out some facts relating distance rate and time. Uh, it says a motorboat motor boat can maintain a constant speed of 46 miles per hour relative to the water. The boat makes a trip upstream at a certain point in 49 minutes. Okay, and the return trip in 43 minutes. What is the speed of the current? Okay, so you got to think, if the guy's got his foot on the gas and it's stuck at 46 miles per hour, and the only other change is going to be how fast the water's moving, uh, that means upstream is going to take away from the 46, and downstream is going to add to the 46. So it's going to get faster, which is why he's got uh, a slower, or, sorry, a smaller time. Now they didn't tell us how far he went, but we do know that it's the same distance for each leg. Okay, so the formula that relates all of this is distance equals rate times time, and since the up and down distances have to match. That means I'm multiplying. So 49 times 46 minus x has to equal 43 times 46 plus x. Uh, and then I'm just going to solve that equation. So we'll distribute that in. So 49 times 46 is 2,254 minus 49x. And then 43 times 46 is 1978 plus 43x. Uh, we will, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to add 49x to both sides. And we'll subtract off 1978 to both sides. Okay, so 2254 minus 1978, I get 276. And then if I add the two x's, I get 92x. And so if I divide both sides by 92, I get x is 3. Uh, number four, Trent can deliver newspapers in 40 minutes. It takes Lois 10 minutes to do the same route. How long would it take them to deliver the newspapers if they work together? So uh, the idea behind this set problem is we want to think about how, what fraction can they do in an hour. 
So if Trent can do 1 40th of the job in an hour, and Lois can do uh, 1 10th of the job, uh, then how long would it take them to work together? That's where the, sorry, that's where the X comes in. So I want to find a common denominator and then work out the reciprocal. So uh, let's let's do 40. Let's do that. Uh, so we'll multiply this side by 40, and we'll multiply this side by 40. Sorry, 40x for both sides. All right, so what does that give us? Uh, that gives us x plus 4x equals 40 over 40x. So if I cross multiply, I'm essentially going to divide out the 40x's, so I get the equation x plus 4x equals 40, so 5x equals 40, and so x would be 40 over 5, or 8 minutes. It's almost not even worth working with Trent if it only takes eight minutes. Um, anyways, so there you go. All right, in number five, we are illustrating the difference quotient. Uh, so the formula's uh, right there in front of us. So we just need to set that up. So I want f of x plus h. Uh, so f of x plus h, which is three, x plus h squared minus x plus h plus 2. So I want to come back and work that out. And then once I get that, then I want to subtract off f of x, which is just 3x squared minus x plus 2. So let me go work out what f of x plus h looks like. All right. So I got x plus h times x plus h. Uh, distribute the negative end. So minus x minus h plus 2. And let's see, so 3, and that would be x squared, uh, plus 2hx plus h squared, minus x minus h plus 2. And then I'll just put this at the, the end here. So I'm going to distribute the 3 in, and I get 3x squared plus 6hx plus 3h squared minus x minus h plus 2. Okay, so then come back over. And I want to take that long statement. So 3x squared plus 6hx plus 3h squared uh, minus h minus x plus 2. And I want to subtract off 3x squared minus x plus 2 and divide that, all of that, by h. Okay. Now, I'm subtracting, so some of this stuff's going to cancel out. Uh, the 3x squareds cancel out. Uh, the minus x's cancel out. And the plus 2 cancels out. And I'm left with 6hx plus 3h squared minus h all over h. Uh, and then I'll divide... So that gives me 6x plus 3h minus 1. And so that's our difference quotient. Uh, and again, right now, this formula doesn't mean anything to us other than just an exercise in simplifying algebra. But it is a very crucial uh, relationship that we need to understand calculus. So anyways, for us, it's just algebra. Um, but there you go. In number six, we are given a piecewise function, and we are asked to find function values at certain points. Uh, so the first task is to understand where to even look to find uh, certain things. So g of negative 2 uh, means where do I look to find x values that are less than 0, and that's in the top equation. So the top equation is going to look like x minus 2. So something minus 2, and in this case, I'm gonna, my x is negative 2. And so I work that out, and I get negative 4. So that is my uh, functional value. That's when, when x is negative 2, y is negative 4. Uh, then g of 0, uh, I'm going to look and again see where does this thing equal 0. And over here in my domain statement, 
uh, that actually is the top equation again. So I want something minus 2, in this case it's 0 minus 2, so that would be negative 2. Number 7, we are uh, reading a graph and answering some information about it. Uh, so our intercepts, uh, starting with that, uh, are where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. So I actually can see uh, two ordered pairs that would describe that. Uh, so one of our intercepts is the ordered pair 0, 0. And it looks like it's 2 and a half comma 0. So uh, now on the test, it's, it's actually very clear what number that is. Uh, our domain, domain refers to the x-axis. So kind of think I'm driving on the x-axis and when's the first time I hit something I hit something at that number and I stop touching x values at that number so the domain goes from negative 3 to 3 and why brackets well if you look the ordered pairs that actually form those endpoints are closed circles so that means I would include the uh, negative 3 and positive 3 for my uh, domain uh, range okay range uh, I'm gonna go up the y-axis and the first time I hit something is at that number and the last time is that number well uh, the bottom end is negative 1 so it's gonna go from negative 1 all the way up to 2 and again, same argument as for as the domain is that I'm including those numbers. So, you know, of course, I'd have closed pairs on those. All right, increasing, decreasing, and constant. <clears throat> uh, by definition, these are open intervals. Uh, and increasing means as x gets bigger, where do I see y values that are increasing? And that actually doesn't happen until uh, right here at 2 and then I see the y values are going up at that point. So they're doing something else before 2. Uh, so they are starting at 2, they are increasing, and they stop increasing uh, from 3. And actually, let me do this. this. This might help us see this a little bit better. I'm going to get rid of some of this other stuff that I've drawn on my picture. And I'm going to come in here and say, all right, so from 2 to 3, I'm saying the y values are getting bigger. Okay, decreasing. So decreasing, uh, again, open interval. And I want to look to see where the y value is going down. Well, the first time they're going down is right here at negative 1. And they keep going down, down, down until right there. So they are decreasing the entire time in that picture. So that would be from negative 1 to positive 1. The y values are decreasing. Uh, constant, uh, constant would be where are they staying uh, the same. And there's two places where the y values are flat. Uh, and so that would be from negative 3 to negative 1. And then another location would be from 1 to 2. So when all said and done, I should be able to go through my entire domain and I have reassigned my domain interval to places where it's increasing, places where it's decreasing, and places where it's constant. Uh, and then the last question, uh, is it even, odd, or neither? Um, even would mean uh, something where it's either in the first quadrant, uh, let's see, and or the second, or, the, I'm sorry, first and fourth, or second and third, uh, where I'd see some sort of reflection in that direction. Uh, I don't quite see that. Uh, odd would either be first and third or second and fourth and I don't see that so it's got to be the third case where it's neither it's not quite even or odd